If you are anything like me, then you are a big fan of this person. It may have been a while since you heard the name, but Okonfo Kwade is not a name that needs explanation. I'm very excited to speak to him, and he's right here with me. Bro, yeah, yeah, what yeah. a pleasure. Yeah, it's a pleasure to talk to you, you know. So good to see you. Where have you been? Uh, that's the question everybody's asking, you know. I've been around, I haven't been too far away, but uh, I've just been chilling out and, you know. You're still a musician, right? Are you still making music? Yeah, I'm making music. I just came out, uh, I came here to um, put up my new song, you know. I want people to feel it because it's been a long time now, you know. So, man, feel the good old choir there, the one they miss, you know. I come to see my fans again. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Now, today we are talking about money in yeah. the music business. Yeah. We've seen how uh, people on social media are talking about uh, which musicians have money and which ones don't have money and whether there's even money to be made yeah. in the music industry. Now, yeah. you've been in it for a while. Talk to me about that part of the business. Were you, you know, back then when your songs were on every radio station, were you rich? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, this is a very important question, you know. It's good if asked this. Because when I came out, people didn't really understand what I was trying to put across, you know. So it took me time. It took me time for people to really get down to what I was saying. But when they understood what I was saying, look, I could make um, 100,000 inlay copies, you know, inlay, the cassette papers, the inlay cards, and within two weeks, it's gone. That was not in Accra, that was in Kumasi, BA, Bono, you know, uh, Brown for region, that area. So Maka says every week I could just, 100,000 could just go off like that. So man, at a point in time in Ghana, I was the biggest and the richest guy in Ghana here, but they didn't know about it. My music was selling everywhere, more than everybody. But they didn't know about it, and they don't even know where I kept all that money before I got myself all this noise up, you know. So man, if you talk about money in the Ghana, the, the Ghanaian music industry, don't leave Kwade out, man. The money he made, you can ask, there's Okura Kumante, he's here, he can tell you, he can even confirm to you, because um, when my, my songs comes out, you know, it just shot, it, it goes off like that. And I've got um, the sound distributors always coming in and coming in for the tapes, you know. So it, it was all like that. So I don't know now if the musicians are making money. Now it's like you have to put it on the net and blah, blah, that thing. But you have to be still identified as the same person. You still make your money. You know, so they shouldn't try to brand themselves as if um, uh, uh, the, the idea of doing the music is uh, to just let people see your pictures and the way you are, you know, your, your, the way you handsome or your, you, you understand. That's not the, the argument. The argument is what you said. People listen to what you have said, not your face and your pictures. So you can influence people with your message, you understand. The influence you give to people, you can influence people through your music. But now the artists, they are selling, it's like they're selling the, the clothes they wear, you know? The message doesn't really connect the people again. So I don't know what kind of money they are making now, though. I know they make shows, they play shows, they do, but I don't know if they're really making the kind of, the, the stardom money, celebrity money we're talking of. I don't know if they, because y your cassettes, you know, demand, they have to demand for you. I was feeling like that. You know, yeah, I was being, they demanded for me. My tapes, people could call in, come in, Accra, Top Radio, if you remember those times. You can ask Top Radio, the way they were, quite tapes, the way people were buying them out there. So, man, I've been through all this, yeah? That's, that's very interesting. Yeah. It looks as if the, the business model for music yeah. back then mm. may have changed. Yeah. So, teach us more about the model back then. So, you were selling these cassettes. So, when you sell one cassette, how much of that money goes to you? How much goes to the team? Uh, talk to me about how it works. Um, when we started, you know, normally you have to go in. Um, you have to go in with a demo. You have to search for producer. That's how we all know it, right? The, like even the, the I don't know what about the, the, these nowadays artists, but I'm talking about the Lord Kenyans, the Brad Force. The, they all came out through a certain medium. You know, you have to produce a demo to uh, what, a kind of executive producer. You know, so that he would finance everything for you. So you just be the artist, you be the executive producer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as time went on, the artists decided to just handle their own business. You know, so the producers, 
contract, people had problems because they, they were contracted to, you know, uh, you, you have to sign a contract with a producer to come out with music, you know. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the money becomes an issue because I brought you out, I need my percentage. Sometimes you also feel you are the artist, so you need this amount of money. You understand? So there's always that argument again, and there's still, now there's still that argument. Mm -hmm. So, so how in we, your case, how were you splitting the, the proceeds? I, if you I, sell one, one tip for 10 cities, how is that money split? Yeah, you know, in my case, I had, uh, I had a producer. But um, I, for once, went for competition, like the Miss Ghana competition, the one that uh, we had terrible in Chaka. Yeah, I went for that competition and I won. So I was supposed to go to the final and I didn't go. So like somebody caught me up and said, man, don't go to the final. Let me just handle this business and we'll see about it. Mm -hmm. So we, we had a contract, but he was like sitting me down to work with me because I had to go for the final of the Miss Ghana. That was Media Whiskey's mm -hmm. table in Chaka that time. I had to go to the final, so he was, it was also uh, competitive because somebody is looking for Kwade in a competition, and you also want him to stop the competition, and you sign, like, you sign him on as an executive producer. So at the end of the day, who loses? Because now he's, the media whiskey's people, they're asking for me, and the executive producer is also asking for me. So who is going to pay me the more? So the producer had to really sit me down, you know, and because he understood everything I was bringing up. So he sat me down, and he said, okay, um, let's say you have this, you can do your shows, but I want to make uh, my investment, the money he invested into the song. When he, 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 he gets that out of the whole sum, then you can have your show money. So if you sell cassettes, the producer will have to, you know, the expense, the money uh, he invested into the act, you know, he have to get it back, you understand? Then the artist can share the rest with him. If he doesn't get the, the risk, the risk money, like the, uh, if he doesn't get it back, then the, the album was a flop. So in your case, uh, did your producers make enough money from? Yeah, they made so many, they made so much money. They were even going outside. We were going outside, traveling outside, up and down, man. How about you? Typically, if you were to break down how much you were earning, you'd yeah. say every month you'd make about how much money into your account? Uh, I, for once, I save a backlist and stand chart. If I show you my bank statement, those, and then, you can see like um, I was I was the first artist to be paid like uh, those times thirty million at at um, uh, uh, La Palm Beach. There was a show there. They had to pay me thirty million. That it wasn't. It's like man, we just this is the money. It wasn't bargain, you know. It's like this is the money we want you to have this money and perform for us. I didn't tell them, man, because those times, artists were charging like five million, 10 million, but they just kept the money there and said, quiet, they want you to be here for us. So take this money and then come for us. That was 30 million. For one show? One show, just a night, about uh, 20 minutes performance. Mm -hmm. And then later, when I went outside, outside the emergency card, the Navy breed. Mm -hmm. Outside the money, because it was like, you even have to get a visa and everything, you know, to, to get me into the country. Finally, what do you think about what's happening today uh, with artists uh, beefing with each other? There is a suggestion that all of that is just to make more money. You, you are an industry player. What do you think? Yeah, you know, yeah, it's good to be making money, but, you know, you have to make, um, when you're beefing, you know, you, you know it's a quarrel. Like, it's a quarrel. So you, you beefing with the other artists, you have to make sure it's, uh, it's healthy. Otherwise... Because we all say things we don't like. In the music, you say something, but you can't say it to somebody else. So we have to make sure it's healthy. Otherwise, uh, we could it could just spark, spark but up. But is it a way of making more money, do you think? So? Um, it's, it's a way of uh, making the game stand. That's how I see it. You know, uh, like uh, the, song, the, the music industry. If there was supposed to be beef, not insults or by healthy beefs, it makes it stand. People want to listen to this guy or can't say or can't say. We've been so bad, there's something like counteraction. You see? Uh, I'll have to counteract you and say, because also you say, fan some of your comfort quite there. And I'm acting with my I'm creative, I can weave basket. Man, I can also weave kente, and I'm also this, you know. So we can correct each other in that sense. But when we start talking from the way of the way we look, I look nicer, my teeth is gold, it makes others vest. You know? Anyway, that's how it is. But if you tell me your teeth is gold and blah, and I'm whisked and I'm not anything, you are all everything there is, 
then you know the beef is not healthy. Yeah. All right, now I know I'm not the only one who has missed you terribly. We're yeah, so excited yeah, you're on your way right, back. So right. something special yeah. for the people watching The Pulse right now. Would you give us a little uh, freestyle, a little something for those who have missed you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just um, do this nice song for all the lovely mothers and ladies out there, you know. Uh, check me out. See me do fool me bruni, bra me in China me can we? Me who watch it, me who watch it, bra me can we? Ya who matia e? E dia na be di, e dia na be she e? She mi koto kum, mi botum, mi botum a e ma e? Odo de me kwe chiri chiri, she me huri e ni subiri me ni swa e mi gidi gidi. Odo si e ni e my say, well, come on, let's keep it like that, man. <laughs> well, yeah. there's more to come yeah. when, the new, when the new music drops. But until yeah. then, uh, well, I can't say anything else to top Yo, that, can I? Big love, man. Quade, what a pleasure. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah.